Howdy y'all, this is Red Wolf. I've been out here uh, testing and finishing up exactly what I want to carry on my Godfathers of Bushcraft Surviving History trip. And uh, I think I got everything pretty well squared away at this point. And I figured it'd be time to do a kit dump like I talked about doing in my last video. A um, couple of quick updates. Um, I think I got my bedroll figured out exactly where I want to. I'm going to be carrying uh, two blankets. I've got a four pound and uh, this is either six or an eight um, comboed up. They're really warm and I'm going to be carrying an extra uh, canvas tarp with me to use the ground cloth. Um, that's something that I pretty well normally do when I carry a bedroll. But last couple of days at my testing spot here We've had rain blowing in, and it's been blowing in everywhere. And uh, I've decided that I want to make sure that when the wind changes, all my stuff doesn't get soaked by the rain blowing in this way instead of this way and this catching it. So um, I'm going to carry a second one. Where I, what I do is I just double up my poles and catch them in an X up here and then tie my other tarp on it. Um, the other thing is this canvas tarp that I've been running. I had to, uh, let's see if I can get it in camera. I had to add a little support pole to it. Um, I personally just did a bad job of uh, sinking the post in the ground. Um, so that's something learned. But other than that, it's held up really well. I'm probably uh, going to go ahead and re say I've uh, rethought my position on nailing the canvas to the beams. Uh, it's actually really effective. I can see why they did it so much. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, reposition the camera and everything. We'll do a quick kit dump. All right, guys. So we'll see if we can get through this pretty quick. So I've got little ties on my bag here, which were just a, kind of an afterthought that I added to it. And uh, even just that little bit of cord goes a long way. So as mentioned, we've got my cup. I uh, normally keep this pretty close to the surface. You always seem to need it. Um, this is my uh, market wallet, which is probably a little, probably not super common at the particular time period of doing this. But I've got several of these and I really like them. They've got a slit here in the middle for you to put everything into. Um, and bigger versions of this would have been used uh, traditionally for bed mattresses really common pattern really well used now i've got all kinds of little things in here i got some gun oil uh, and i'm using modern gun oil because i didn't have a uh, historical bottle in the right size i was looking for and uh, that was just convenient and i've got some fishing line and matches in a tin uh, let's see what else i got in here uh i've got some cord right here and uh just been pulling it out of the center and this is just some basic old jute twine but it's within spec and uh really good if you need an emergency bird nest or something like that um let's see i think i got a couple spare candles in here yep i got a couple of spare beeswax candles which go to uh, my candle lantern now this is, uh, once again, from Spirit Horse Enterprises, C.C. Sutlery. Uh, thought it was pretty nifty when I got it, and uh, just a neat little contraption. I'm going to give it a, a little bit more extensive trial while we're out here. I also have a uh, roll of snare wire, and uh, I got an opinel. Now in my other pocket here, oh, getting into cutting tools. Now this is a, a match safe. It's a marbles, and it was uh, patented in 1900, so it seemed pretty appropriate. Now these are little. It's a little weird, but it unfurls up and then pops out. You can see I got a little bit of. Uh, I put a cotton ball in there to act as uh, either emergency tender or to. Uh, but also to keep my matches from banging around in there and tearing the heads off. 
Now my two pocket knives I've got are this uh this is a Boker tree brand. Really nice uh in the trapper pattern, which seems kind of appropriate for this. It's certainly well within reason for the time period. And the other one I have is an Oppenel. Um wasn't able to figure out which one I wanted to carry. But this style uh of jackknife is well within historical precedent. And Oppenel themselves with their uh yeah, with the twisting bolster that keeps it from locking on you. Um, I believe these were patented in the 1890s, and uh, that also seemed appropriate. I'm not really sure which one I like better. Um, this is nice and sharp and stays that way for a long time, but this has two edges and gives me a little bit of uh, option on what I want to use. So for now, I'm carrying both of them, and I'll just hang the minimalism for a little bit. And the other end down here, I've got a, uh, a couple of hanks of rope that I keep locked up in there. Uh, just convenient to carry it, not hanging off anywhere. Um, now this is gonna be one of my uh, Civil War haversacks. And uh, these are traditionally used for uh, carrying food and uh, just kind of seemed appropriate. Uh, I'm not sure where I bought this one. I've had this one for a good many years now. But I got a supply of jerky here. This is some stuff that I made myself. And I got a couple of bags in here right now is all I really got. Um, these are a couple of flour sacks we made. And I've got some um, oats and some cornmeal in here. And you'll find that I like sub-compartmentalizing everything in its own little bag. Because it seems to be a lot easier to keep track of when you do it that way. Okay, now this is going to be uh, my snug pack hammock. One of them has got the ropes and all that in here. Um, I have several snug packs. I like them. But um, they talk about like balloon uh, silk and stuff like that for uh, hammocks. And Camp Life in the Woods even talks about how so hammocks are so common that there's no reason to, to discuss their advantages. So I figured it only appropriate I carry one of these. I'm not sure if I use it on this trip, but we will find out. Let's see what else I got tucked away in here. Ugh. So this is another haversack I had lying around. This is a little bit more early period. And in it, I've got my uh, my plate and my uh, folding skillet uh, up in there. And this keeps it uh, compact and it keeps it quiet. Now, I don't have a whole lot of rations in here yet. I'm still debating if I want to go back and uh, get some more like the book suggests or if I just want to wing it a little bit. But also in here, uh, to represent my weight, I've got a couple of uh, dog-proof coon traps and a trap tool. Now, uh, that's basically everything I carry in my knapsack. It's not huge. Um, it really makes you focus on uh, getting stuff that's multi-use and... Uh, it's pretty good like that for getting you in the right mindset. But I got a little bit more gear to get down, so let me reposition the camera again and I'll get it out. <sighs> Alright, so I may only be about half in, half out of this shot, but I want y'all to get a good look at the gear. So this is uh, this is my belt, and you see I got it strapped up here. Uh, I pulled it, just looped it up and pulled it over the top of the... Uh, support beam here to hang overnight keep it close to hand and uh, got a couple things on it uh, some of it surprised me um, first off my big knife I'm gonna be carrying this is a custom knife that I've had since I was about 10 um, learned a lot of my good bad habits in the woods with it um, there's pros and cons to carrying a knife that size um, I'm, I like it. I know what I can do with it. I can skin. I can chop. I can cut down a lot of stuff. I don't have to dig out a bigger axe to do stuff. And I don't have to carry out my pocket knife all the time. It's handy. It's around. And I can do a lot of the normal medium size kind of task that I end up doing when I'm in the field. Um, that's why I've got a big knife. The other thing that uh, kind of surprised me a little bit... Uh, is Kephart stuff was all kind of a World War II style hammock. 
Um, this is a one quart. I'm not entirely certain how big his was, but um, it was certainly in this size. And uh, this has got the nestling cup down in there. I may or may not use it, but I didn't want to lose it in my kit at the house. Um, one of the big uh, arguments I kind of have with myself is whether or not I wanted to have uh, a possibles bag to carry everything. You know, I like bags, I like belt pouches, I like carrying a lot of gear on me. Um, Nesmuk was very pro uh, Possible's pouch, and he being the earlier of the two, and he liked a pouch uh, around this size. Um, pretty small, pretty compact, carries a lot of gear. Matter of fact, I got most of my gear tucked away in here to. Uh, just make a point about it but I've got the larger bag here because the larger bag lets me add uh, I've got my wet rock and my bandana in here I've uh, I've got my spyglass now I mentioned last time uh, about a looking glass or a pocket glass I've heard this called that in some things but there's a good chance that what they actually meant was some kind of microscope so that you could uh, start solar fires and uh, I want to make a little clarification on that and it also gave me room in here for another bag to put tinder in or uh, just little utilities and stuff yeah. now I'm gonna reposition the camera one more time on the table so I can kind of get this pouch out and we can talk about it uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so this is going to be uh, your possibles, and they call it possibles because it's uh, stuff you carry to deal with what you might possibly come into. So like I said, I've already got my bandana, I've got my uh, real nice Arkansas stone, um, I've got a file in here somewhere for when I need uh, major stuff taken care of. I've got my bag, um, now just in case I haven't made clear what this actually is. Um, this is my spyglass. Um, it's something like a nine power magnification, I think, on it. A um, little bit hard to get used to, but it's way better than uh, going blind out here when you got something you need to see at a long range. Now, in addition to my matches and all that, um, I regularly carry this. This is a, uh, technically it's a tobacco tin. Um, but it's got the lens in it because if you're smoking you don't want to start fires all the time with the flint and steel um, they use the solar lens to start up the uh, tobacco and all that I've got a flint and steel in here and I've got some char cloth in the house um, I'm going to pack in here and some extra little stuff um, let's see I'm going to go over that in a minute that's kind of a little thing so inside my kit I've got another kit and this is a uh, Leftover from some of my Viking stuff, some of this, but uh, this is a toothpick and ear spoon, which is a uh, real old school uh, Q tip. Pretty nifty and uh, backs up as an awl if I need it to. I've got a horn comb for taking care of my hair and stuff like that, and that can be a real big deal to keep off uh, lice and stuff like that. Um, in here, I keep uh, wrapped up a little mirror. In case I need it, which looks like this, and a spare. These are real popular trade items too, and uh, just seemed appropriate to carry a few with me in case some stuff got real. And uh, you notice I keep a lot of little leather bags. Uh, said I like to compartmentalize, and you seem to be able to get more stuff in your kit, bumping little things together. Let's see. And in here I've got two more candles. These are uh, beeswax and with my matches and stuff uh, these are fire extenders and stuff and you need them on little stuff you can polish up or protect with wax and stuff like that um, the candles just kind of an all-in-one package and uh, yep, that's most of what I got in here the other big thing is this is my housewife which is a, a sewing kit for lack of a better term and this is one that we bought while we were uh, at Vicksburg and I uh, I haven't got it fully pimped out yet, but I like this one. It's got these little pouches in here, 
and you know you got needles stuck through and there's little bits of uh you have your little bits of uh thread and stuff in here this isn't really good i need to redo that i've used some of the stuff out here but one of the things i did in here was i rolled up my fishing line and put my fishing hooks in it and i've got room for some baits and a sewing kit and all that just kind of wrapped up in there that's a uh david howard original right there and i uh i like that i like that a lot tie it back over a little bit all right so uh, let's see how we want to play this so the last major uh Alright, so the uh, last major item of kit in there, and I might make, like I said, I might make some small modifications here and there, but um, last big item of kit I need to carry is the axe, tomahawk type stuff I'm going to carry. Now, Kefart favored a, uh, sound like somebody got him a deer. Um, Kefart favored a tomahawk, tomahawk style hatchet, it's a lot like this uh, cold steel uh, pipe hawk. 20 22 inch handle um pretty handy i, I like these of, of cold steel's tomahawk line uh this is probably my favorite i've owned a couple um hadn't broke one i've given them away done a lot of work with them um the uh but what i'm actually going to carry is a modified one this is one of their pipe hawks pulled the screw out got one of their 30 inch uh warhammer handles threw it in here um i would know this as a canoe camp or a squall axe um and because i've understand there's some political connotations there for some reason now um my understanding of squall is an old school term for just grown-ass woman um and uh that's how i intend it um then i've seen some grown-ass ladies with these and you know one and a half two pound head 30 inch handle they chew through stuff quicker than a beaver um just really useful tool and it's small and light enough i can still you know i can still pound stakes with it but it's long enough i can get some leverage and do some minor chopping and all that and i don't think i'm going to need anything heavier for what i'm doing you know camp life in the woods i mentioned stuff with boats it's got stuff on log cabins and all kinds of different this and all kinds of different that I'm not going to be doing anything that extreme with uh, this particular uh, this particular thing, and uh, I'm real fond of these. I need to do a better uh, review on them sometime soon. But um, I reckon that'll about cover it for now. Uh, got any questions? Want to see anything? Let me know down in the comments. Till next time, this is Rebel signing off. Y'all keep up the good fight.